Oh, it's just moving my thing. Hello. It is I, Dark Symphony 777. And I wanted to do something of uh, a, a different type of video. Sorry about that. So I wanted to talk about uh, a... I don't know how to describe it. A character archetype. And give my thoughts and and, and and sort of a dissection and discussion on this type of character. And you can feel feel you can feel free to join in the comment section below. As always, uh, please like this like the video, subscribe to the channel, click on that bell for notifications, and then hit Bob's your uncle. So what care so the reason I'm doing this character, I'm gonna name I'm gonna name drop the character a little bit, don't worry, just is I've seen a lot of it become something of a mainstream term and I don't like the fact a lot of people are kind of just throwing out this term willy-nilly when it comes to a character in a TV show and a cartoon and a movie and a book and stuff like that and just and just tosses them out willy-nilly without even without realizing what what's the background and what the, the term actually is the term is Mary Sue. Now, for those of you who don't know, according to TVTropes.com, a, a Mary Sue is a derogatory term used for a particular type of character. Uh, TV, first off, TV Tropes doesn't even have... Ha doesn't even have the concrete definition of what a Mary Sue is. It said it varies from person person to person. And the most common term for a Mary Sue is any character that is deemed too perfect. Like they don't have enough flaws and you know everything goes around them. There's different types of Sue characters. Alright. So, before we get into the actual discussion, I thought I'd give a little background on where the term Mary Sue came from. And not only that, but also the origins of the char of the character archetype itself. Because, you know, there's all sorts of different archetypes. Damsels in the Dread, Blood Knights, uh, anti-heroes, anti-villains. So, sort of, sort of, continue, continuing on for that. Mary Sue... Actually, original the name Mary Sue, not the character archetype. The character archetype actually came from somewhere else, but the term, but the name Mary Sue, came from a 1974 Star Trek fan fiction. Yes, yeah, right. Mary Sue was originally a fan fiction term, and it still is. It still, you know, people is still technically used primarily as a fan fiction tool. I'll be getting into why it's used co more commonly nowadays because of you know everything. Um, in a story, it's a fan fiction called A Trekkie's Tale. It's a very, very old fan fiction. It had, it actually debuted in a, I believe it was a magazine catered just to Star Wars, Star Trek fans. And basically the story basically had this character named Lieutenant Mary Sue wander, uh, get onto the, I'm not familiar with Star Trek. I believe the, it was the Enterprise. Yeah, the Enterprise. And then all the other characters fall in love with her they probably fall in love with her she has no flaws she's one dimensional she's very she's very very bland stuff like that and overall that was the name she was the catalyst of the name mary sue she wasn't the creation of the character archetype no um what a lot of people don't know is the fan it was another fan fiction that created the archetype that was the catalyst for the archetype of this of the mary sue character and that fan fiction was, I mentioned it so many times in the past, My Goddamn Immortal. Oh my god. My Immortal is one of those fan fictions that people use to do, to deride fan fiction as horrible writing. And that's and and the term Mary Sue is pretty much the outlier. So Mar uh, My Immortal is basically a very, very old, not as old as a Trekkie's tale. It's like, uh, My Immortal is like l mid to late 90s, I believe. And it stars this character named... Oh my god, I don't even... I, the name is so... So annoying. My Immortal, blah, blah, blah. No. Fan fiction. Blah. 
I try. I, I gotta. Ebony. All right. Ebony Dark Darkness Dementia Raven Way is this is this is the the most talk it was when it comes to like fan fictions that derive that basically everyone uses to say bad fan fictions are bad they'll usually they'll always go to agony and pain they'll always go to a trekkie sale though but most of the time they will they will go to my own world because that was that was and still is the Probably the most well known of the fan fictions. Yeah, Passins and Fallout Quest here. In terms of My Little Pony stories, they're really well known even outside their communities. And, you know, and Passins actually is slightly mainstream in a weird sort of way. But My Immortal was the very first fan fiction to go mainstream. And it was not in a flattering way because it basically everyone just derided it as people. One by one. People making fun of fan fiction, saying fan fiction will never be good as you know actual novels. Granted, if you didn't know, Fifty Shades of Grey was originally a fan fiction. Shocker, I know. But that's beside the point. People will always go back to the my immortal argument. So the reason why the Mary Sue arch character architect came from my immortal because you're thinking. Wait, if the name came from that Star Trek fan fiction, a, tre a Trekkie's tale, why did the character archetype debut in My Immortal? Because at the time, Mary Sue was she was just a one-off. Not to mention, a Trekkie's tale was more or less just a, tr a parody fan fiction. It was a fair, it was a well, it was a badly done parody fan fiction of making fun of self inserts. That was pretty much it, but this, but that was just basically a one-off. Usually, when it comes to uh, insert stories, you know, you always you always get like basically you take the author, you take their character, and you put them in the story. That's it. You don't try and make them perfect unless you're purposely trying to do it. But the reason why it didn't become a character archetype was simply because of the fact. My Trekkie was basically just limited to a small one time, a small newspaper, uh, magazine, uh, a series based just around Trekkie fans. That it was basically just limited to that one magazine, and the only people who know that fan fiction are really not very knowledgeable in the history and you know the history and knowledge of fan fiction, fan fiction terms, stuff like that. It's like. When you think of Mary Sue, you think of my... You, you more people... When people think of Mary Sue, they more think of My Immortal than A Little Trekkie. When they think of the name, they think of the Star Trek. But they, when they think of the character, they go straight to My Immortal because My Immortal became mainstream. Because er, because once My Immortal hit, the, my, the Harry Potter fans had a conniption fit and it basically spread to everyone who actually ever heard of it. And so, I mean, before I even got into fan fiction, even I have heard of My Immortal way about around 2006, 2007. That was about five, four or five years before I even got into fan fiction. I didn't know My Immortal was a fan fiction, but even I heard of it before I even got into the, right, the reading. Which kind of shows that My Immortal is basically the most mainstreamed fan fiction of all time. At least until Slenderman showed up. I mean, because Slenderman is technically a fan fiction character. So, you're basically wondering, so why is this important? The Why this is important is how, why people are using Mary Sue as a derogatory term. Basically, Raven, Dementia, whatever you want to call her, was basically an ultra-perfect character in a very, very badly grammared story which is basically just my immortal and everyone hated it to the point you know people hated it. i mean it, my immortal and agony and pink these are the two these were the two most destructive fan fictions in the history of fan fictions ever i mean uh my immortal gave us probably the most hated character archetype and agony and pink did so much damage to fanfiction.net as a whole 
that I'm probably that I may actually do a video just talking about the history of Agony and Pink and how much it it, it shaped fan fiction as we know it. I mean, if it wasn't for Agony and Pink, we wouldn't have archive of our own. We wouldn't. We probably would not have uh, FIM fiction. Maybe that one's more up in the air. Uh, we wouldn't have the term lemons. Uh, we wouldn't have the term lines. We wouldn't really have a lot of fan fiction related stuff that we have today. All that stretched back to Agony and Pink. Also, Agony and Pink was sort of the prototype to creepypastas. This was technically the very first creepypasta, despite the fact it was created in the late 90s. But back to My Immortal. The reason, again, why My Immortal and not Trek of Trekkie's Tale was because of the fact My Immortal went mainstream. Once people heard of it, it le it didn't leave their consciousness. And it, it's kind of a shame because now, you know, it's only just started recently, like the last year or two, that people are starting to realize, hey, fan fiction is going to be good. But people still use the My Immortal argument because there's still a lot of trophics that come out. There's still a lot of badly grammar fan fictions. Hey, I'm not, uh, I'm not blaming... Uh, you know, fanfic because not every fanfiction ha writer has their own style. Everyone who writes has their own style, and the reason I wanted to be a writer because I wanted to highlight those styles. And, and you know, another uh, interesting fact: I mentioned this as far back as my first Five Nights at Freddy's fanfiction. I'm not a fan of first person or second person. I read only third person, but I will congratulate someone who gets me into something related to that is in first person. Five Night, the Five Nights at Freddy's fan fiction that I talked about. It was first person. I actually liked it. Uh, more recently, Hercules and the Modern Girl. That story can easily be switched to first person if so need be. Because, you know, it actually it could easily be first or third person. I mean, it, it wor the story and how it's told works well for both types of point of views. But, the re but now, getting back to the main question I had in the video. Why is Mary Sue kind of becoming more mainstream now? And that's because of two movies. One, the tw well, two things. One, the Twilight series, and two, Star Wars. Now, Twilight is more of an outlier because when Twilight, because everyone who kind of read the books knows that Twilight was something of a bad story, and and. Twilight hit everywhere, uh, everywhere. Twi Twilight became the popular. Knows, oh, it's getting a movie. Everyone wouldn't. Nobody would not talk about it. Everyone talked about it. Even friends that I knew in high school, they had, they were carrying Twilight books. It's like I don't, except for me, I never liked the books. I read about the first couple chapters of the first Twilight, and it's like, not for me. Mm -mm. No, 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 not my not my cup of tea. Especially when I started doing research, and especially if you actually read the first couple of chapters, Bella Swan had a lot of obvious Sue characteristics. Uh, Mer Bella Swan is pretty much become the prototypical Mary Sue in terms of literature. Uh, so when I think of you know when most people think of a Sue character, they will think. Of Bella Swan. Bella Swan is a very badly written character. Do I think Twilight is a bad book overall? Not necessarily. It did have some good points. I really like what the author at least did with the werewolves. But I hate. But as a cl fan of classical vampire literature, I read Carmilla. I read Bram Stoker's Dracula. I read a lot of vampire books. I'm a big fan of the Castlevania franchise. And I did not like what the all he tried to mash classical vampires and and more modern vampires, except for the fact he actually did the wrong thing. <coughs> Making vampires live in the sunlight. Okay, makes sense. If you actually did your research, Bram Stoker's Dracula was actually able to walk around in the sunlight. Granted, he was easier to kill, hence why he hid in the coffin, because, you know, he would be easier to kill in the daylight, that rather than, you know, getting stabbed, then, you know, at night, where he'd be super powered and super tough to hit, and kill, and stuff like that. 
<clears throat> and of course, the the photo sensitivity kind of came at a later date to like a bunch of revisions. Um, but direct, you know, direct, the first vampires legends they were allowed to walk in the light. They were just drastically weakened. Uh, but and I thought, okay, that's a neat idea. Having vampires walk in the sunlight, it's something you know vampires used to have and now because of media and stuff like that they need more weaknesses you know take away interest it was an interesting call and then they made decide to make the vampire sparkle which set off red flags all across my mind it's like mm -mm. Mm -mm. no and then you had the actor for for uh ed the vampire and bella swan they didn't they had no chemistry they barely did anything. Not to mention, if you actually read the story, you see that you know, Bella Swan kept talking about how plain she is. Yet everyone would not stop talking about her. Nobody would stop talking about her. Nobody. I mean, right? Even that was kind of obvious. Like, even without reading the whole story, I could easily tell Bella Swan was a suit character. And it didn't help the fact I saw one of the Twilight movies. And I didn't like it. I thought it was a very boring Trek. Granted, I saw the third movie, and I'm like, it's still a boring Trek. The only thing the uh, the author did interesting at all was what she did with the werewolves. That is it. Everything else, rubbish. It was trash. Put it in a fire. Set it on fire. Set it on fire. Throw it in the crap. Whatever you want to do it. <clears throat> How about well? What about but? After a while, people kind of, everyone kind of got the obvious that yeah, it's it, the the movie's trash. Once all the hype went down, everyone saw the writing on the wall. Bella Swan's trash. The whole movie's trash. The books are trash. Five Fifty Shades of Grey was basically just trying to copy and paste Twilight until it became its own sex filled romp. Why I don't know. <clears throat> and then we get. To Star Wars, specifically the character Rey from The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens. She was. Rey is kind of a great Rey because of the fact that she actually had inklings of being a well developed character. It's just the awe, it's just the casting behind it kept trying to make her a strong, fe independent female lead. And that kind of completely overshadowed her character that they tried to keep making this happen instead of letting it flow naturally. And that ruined her character. If she, she, Ray wouldn't be talked about as much if not for the fact they didn't stop constantly pushing this femini the feminist agenda. I'm not saying I, I hate feminists. I'm just saying when your whole marketing com campaign is literally based around the fact that raise a female rather than telling a story high guardians reference to high guardian spice from crunchyroll then it kind of starts bringing up red flags now ray could have worked unlike bella swan she had she was dead on arrival stuff like that ray had promise but the problem is they focused too much on trying to make her independent they kept trying to they kept having the writing concert and character contradict herself she did all these star these highly trained jedi tricks without no training if they showed like some kind of tricks or something then they would have done it but they didn't they completely lamp they kept trying to subvert expectations of the movie completely ruined the character completely ruined the last Jedi. force awakens was okay and, and guess what this is coming from someone who is not a Star Wars fan. I am more of a Harry Potter fan. There are so many things wrong. The reason why people are using Mary Sue's is now because they're trying to... It, it, they most, most of the people, they misinterpreted Mary Sue as a perfect character to character I don't like. Which does not work. You need well-written characters. You need well-developed characters. This is where pacing comes in. I'm not familiar with pacing in movies, stuff like that. I'm more familiar with pacing in literature. 
Literature and movies are completely two different beasts because you can make the book as long as possible and have different volumes, but you're condensed by a time frame in a movie. And, you know, depending on what kind of story you're going to do, it depends on whether or not the you know, rushing it would screw over your characters or not. Because some movies and some plots kind of benefit from going, like, walls or walls fast. Look at Die Hard. That movie was a stereotypical action flick, for all I know. For all I care, it had bare, it had bare minimum character development. It had very, very, it had... A, a lot a decent character death but the reason why it was so popular was because of the fact it run it ran full tilt from beginning to end that it completely overcame these you know the lack of the the slight lack of character the slight lack of character death the you know how everything kind of feels rushed and hurried it benefited this movie Again, not every movie and not every book will benefit them from the story there has to be certain restraints depending on what plot you're trying to take it worked for Die Hard, moving fast, but it didn't work for movies like, um, what was that one movie? It was an action. It didn't work for Speed Two. My bad. It kind of worked for Speed One, but that was more slow paced and, and mystery than anything. Uh, but you know, a lot of people like slow burns. That's why. That's why I like literature over movies because you know it allows time to digest everything and how everything's built up over the case. Um, sorry, thirsty that time. And there's always sort of concessions. And what I don't like is every, these people keep using Mary Sue's for characters that are developed. They're just characters that people don't like. And therein lies the problem. What truly defines a Mary Sue? A Mary Sue is, true. again, let's go back to the basics. What is a Mary Sue? A Mary Sue is any character that has few to no negative traits. They're always perfect. Everything goes right for them. And, every, you know, everything... You know, nothing bad really happens to them. Or if something bad com comes, they always seem to win by ha either by, like, deus ex machinas or ass pulls or just, like, completely out of uh, out of nowhere happenstance. Uh, and there's also different types of Mary Sue's. Uh, let's go back. I accidentally exited out of the page. Let's go back to the... Let's go back to the page. There, there. Let's use an example of like some of the main, some of the Sue characteristics. Um, let's go. All right. Okay. So here are the types of Sue. These are basically Sues in in the TV shows. I'm going to be using. Uh, uh, Sue, two character types of Sue's that are basically in the store that are classified under TV tropes. So first off, we have the anti. First off, we have the anti Sue. There's there's one May Sue, Mary Sue bridge, and then each there's like different cacks, and and then we have different like sub genres of Sue characters. First one is anti -Sue, anti Sue. This is basic. And the example they said, I'm genuinely useless, but everyone still loves me. This is basically Bella Swan. She keeps putting herself down, but everyone keeps loving her no matter how much she does. And, you know, uh, it, do it doesn't work. It, it, okay, fine. anti sues don't work. And so we have Bella Swan for anti sue I'm genuinely useless, but everybody still loves me. Trash. Before I continue on... There are exa there are subversive examples. Like two characters in and of themselves aren't necessarily bad. It's just how the character how and how the writer or the screenwriter or you know actor uses that character. Because sometimes two characters are very, very good. It's just how you use them. Example, Black Hole Sue, everything is about me. Would you would you believe me? If I told you that a large portion of the My Little Pony fan base considers Twilight Sparkle a Mary Sue, I'm not joking. When when Friendship is Magic 
first came out, and you know, everyone, they already announced that there was going to be six main characters, the main six. However, as season one and season two progressed, it slowly became everyone slowly shifts out of focus except for Twilight. And this reached is Nadir in the episode Hurricane Fluttershy, where she showed up at the beginning of the episode for no reason. And the fact that Fluttershy and Rainbow had kind of saved the day was something Twilight said off camera. There was no reason for Twilight to be in that episode. There was no reason for Twilight to inadvertently save the day. And she was actually a suit character. She actually has qualities of a suit character. It's just she's not perfect. When I think of Mary Sue, I think I'm too perfect character. But when I think of every one of these sub characters, they're just one certain aspect of a Mary Sue. Just they just constructs. No, not Elshadaw construct. Uh, but constructs, as in they're j they still have flaws, but they still technically embody these characteristics. Twilight Sparkle is an example of a Sue character done right because she doesn't have because she event because. One, she has a lot of flaws, mostly her OCD, and two, the writers quickly realized that the fans caught on to the fact they were putting a disproportionate amount of screen time for Twilight Sparkle. Hurricane Fluttershy was the reason why people started getting up, was the episode people started calling Twilight a Sue character. Because of this one episode, because of the fact, is it, oh my god, it's raining outside. I'm gonna ignore that, I was just paying, I was just... Uh, where was it? Oh, yeah. Um, she was labeled as a suit character, and people started watching the old episodes from season one and season two, and realized there was a lot of episodes that she didn't need to be in, but was just in there for no reason other than the fact that they that she was Twilight Sparkle. Do, is she technically a suit character now? No. Around halfway through season three, they completely changed that and kind of made and gave her a lot of character growth. So you can't really call, you can't really call post season two Twilight Sparkle a suit character anymore. Season one, season two Twilight, yeah, go ahead, call her a suit character because that version of Twilight, she gets the she definitely deserves the title. Copycat suit. This is basically every single bad insert character ever. Usually, usually when there's no real, I don't really remember a character that technically embodies this Sue type. Um, there are a lot of original characters. I guess you can kind of, I guess you can kind of count Dakari King, uh, Dakari King Mikan. And a lot of his characters are basically like this. Um, I guess mainly his author avatar. You can kind of count him as a copycat too. Um, <clears throat> a fixer suit. For the most part, fixer suits are mostly used in comedy stories. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of. I haven't seen a fixer suit used very seriously, so I don't really know. I know fixer suits are are mostly used in comedy stories. I know a lot of people actually use Pinkie Pie as a fixer suit in like a lot of like meta joke, meta comedy, comedic uh, fan fiction. So I guess you can kind of count Pinkie Pie as a fixer suit, but only in very specific contexts. God mode suit. Oh, how power overwhelming. <clears throat> It, another My Little Pony fan fiction, specifically in their fan fiction example, Princess Celestia from the from the Chatoyans verse. If you don't know who knows Chatoyans is, go look up. She actually has a TV tropes page. Go just look up Jennifer Diane Reitz tropes and or just look up Conversion Bureau tropes. Uh, that's all I'm really gonna say on that one. <clears throat> Uh, and you know, you got that. Um, a jerk suit. You can kind of say Ainz from Overlord. He's like the main. He can. He's technically a jerk suit because he's a complete other asshat, and you know he has no morals like him. But everyone loves him. 
So Ainz is technically a technically a good example of a Sue character because you know Ainz is that is basically just a good character. He's just a complete other jackass with no that has no remorse and you're expecting everyone to love. Everyone's expecting to love him anyway because of the, because of the simple fact he's an asshat. <clears throat> Next one, Marty Zhu. Another good example, Charlotte Katakuri from One Piece. He was already established that, you know, he would knew everything and he, because he's that damn good, but then he's sl it's slowly subverted over the simple fact he's trying to, he's doing a facade. And so Katakuri is an example of a good Marty Sue. You can kind of throw in Saitama, the One Punch Man, as a Marty Sue because he oh, because another example of a Marty Sue. <coughs> my throat's getting kind of sore. Is another example of Marty Sue is the fact they're usually fighters and everyone throws everything, but they come out unscathed. And you know they beat everyone with the with the with the greatest of ease. And basically curb stomp everyone. That's basically Saitama. But again, he's an example of a good suit character because the, the subvert because he's subverted because he doesn't like the fact he's technically a suit character and he wants someone to be strong enough that he he actually will have to fight rather than you know just one punch dead or one punch beaten. <clears throat> you know. Um. You know everything. Uh, parody Sue, you can kind of, again, just like Fixer Sue, you can kind of throw Pinkie Pie into this because she's technically a Sue. Yeah, I, I, again, you, it works, it, with Pinkie Pie, it works on the, it depends on the context. Uh, this one, I, just like Fixer Sue, Pinkie Pie, just in meta joke, meta humorous contexts. I, I know, Pinkie Pie is weird. And that's all I have to say with Pinkie Pie. She's, she's weird. Is she a bad suit? No, she's not. A possession coup. Uh, possession suit. This is basically a gray area because this is probably the suit character that I know the least about. Basically, the the description for it is your my in the main Mary Sue page of TV shows. My favorite character is an even better version of me. I'm guessing that. Yeah. This is more of a meta. Go away! Sorry! Uh, Go away! I hate him. I'm so lucky I'm moving out of the house. For good, and I won't have and I won't have that idiot distracting me all the time. Oh, so happy I'll be so happy. Oh, I hope it works. Where was I? Oh, early uh possession suit. Basically, what I think possession suits are, are their characters that people feel are basically them turned up to 11. I don't know much about, like, I'm going to skip possession suits. And look, I mean, to me, it kind of reminds me of wrestling, wrestling lingo, because Stone, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin once famously said, the best personas in wrestling are basically themselves turned up to 11. So, I guess, in a way, a lot of the greatest wrestlers are basically possession suits because they're basically themselves just suified? I, I don't know. Again, this one's like... <clears throat> yes, let's just skip that one. For, next up, Purity Suit. This is technically Rey, but you can also kind of throw in Princess Peach because they're both really plain. They're both milk, milk toast. They have not. They're not nothing. They're just there. Uh, these ba purity Sue are basically the classic definition of a Sue character. So they're, uh, yeah, incorruptible pure pureness. So you can kind of throw in Ray from Star Wars, kind of sort of, but more, but probably the first big Sue character you can kind of think of in this in this section would be princess peach she's basically incorruptible pure pureness she has she has no flaws i bet you're wondering well what about well what about all the spin-off games that's just it they're spin-offs they're non-canon main series are basically just you know the most of the game some of the games not all the games stuff like that and it's basically love me except for people except for the fact you know People prefer the spin-off Princess Peach because she has personality. Relationship Sues. 
this is basically any character that Dakar, any original character Dakari King McKeon has created. Because you can kind of fit all his characters in there. Because I do not like, I, for the most part, I don't like his stories. They are like, eh, his characters are like so bad. They are so bad. I have nothing to say about that. Uh, sympathetic you feel sorry for me. No, wait, this would be Ray. Sympathetic suit. This would be Ray from Star Wars because you know you have to feel not so much the character herself, but the but the fact that they kept trying to sh they kept trying to shoehorn powerful, strong female lead into it. If they didn't do that, and they actually instead of focusing more on that, than actually better writing, you know, Ray might actually be a good character. Um, sympathetic suit, you can kind of throw in while I don't know. A sympathetic suit is one I don't know a lot about. I don't know much about. Eh. 30 suit polyp, I know nothing about, so I'm just going to skip that one. Uh, and finally, villain suit. Villain suits are probably the hardest suits to cap to create. And actually, what I'm going to do is, instead of going like the easy way, I'm going to be referencing a fan fiction I reviewed earlier as the example of Villain Sue. That being Valkyrie, the main antagonist from Fusion of Destinies 2, Day of Reckoning. She was a straight-up Villain Sue. However, she is a good example of a Sue character because of the simple fact she was using these Sue characteristics as a facade to, in order to progress her plans, and she slowly lost all these Sue characteristics as the story went on and we saw how evil she truly was she, you know she was using like oh she's a villain but she's technically this pure devil that gives everyone what they want nothing goes wrong with her everything goes completely she's technically the center of her own world she has all these two qualities at the beginning but you see that you find out easily that it's a facade once harry potter says no to her face and you actually see that crack in and find out this is a facade and that is an example of very, very good writing. And that's why, you know, Valkyrie is probably one of my great, my favorite villains in any medium ever because of the simple fact it's her character arc is so well done that I can't complain about it. But now we get to the end. Why, why, for the love of God, these people keep mistaking Mary Sue's Four characters they don't like it's mainly because it's become a catch-all term mary sue's have become so wide known because of twilight that it kind of transcended the fans fan fiction realm and become a mainstream term but the but the problem is a lot of people on the one hand a lot of people keep using it the wrong way because you know you see develop characters and people are thrown the mary sue term just because they don't like them Granted, Mary Sue is a very amorphous term. It kind of changes, but the main but the main focus is perfect character. You know, everything goes right. Like that. um, but that's just a classical term. And then we have, and again, I mentioned all these examples of subtypes of Sue characters. Not all of them bad. I mean, Twilight Sparkle. She was a Sue character, but she's a good character. Saitama, a good character, but he's a Sue character. Charlotte Katakuri, he's a Sue character, but he's a good character too. Valkyrie, villain Sue, she is a she is an amazing villain, and again, one of my favorite fan fiction original characters ever. And not all Sue characters are bad, but it's just how you use them. I mean, again, you can keep going in like anime and cartoon. All Might, All Might is technically considered a. D a deconstruction of a purity sue, I guess. I know All Might is kind of a weird example, but you know he's technically kind. Of, I don't know. Can you really count All Might as a sue character? I don't know. But it, it just really kind of needs to stop. Granted, if granted, there are lots of characters that do deserve this sue character character and yes sue mary sue is still a very derogatory term but the problem is not every one of these sue characters is bad again there are outliers and while i do think mary sue is, should still be a very derog a derogatory term because you know they have the male version gary sue or marty sue however you want to do it um 
I don't think you have to use it in the right context because, you know, everyone has their own context and you should at least list reasonings why you think this character is a Sue character. So, I thank you for... I wanted to talk about this because you know, I keep watch, I keep coming across videos of people talking about Mary Sue's and plot holes and stuff like that. I wanted to at least talk a little bit about one of these topics. Um, I may talk about... I may make a video talking about Agony and Pink in the future. Tell me what you think. Should I do a video on Agony and Pink and and how much infected fanfiction as a whole? So tell me in the comment section below. And tell me what you think of these videos as well. And hell, how about you post a comment on your own, on an example of what you think is a suit character and why? You know, I love, I want to have these conversations. So this has been Dark Symphony. 777 and I thank you I'm happy to be back on YouTube and